A year ago, I posted a video on this same channel arguing that for Greece to hold a referendum on the issue of accepting or rejecting the bailout package that the EU and the IMF had joined forces to offer the country was the right way to go. It was the right approach. Now, now I'm in a position where I have to say in response to Britain's unexpected vote to leave the European Union just a few days ago, as much as I disagree with the outcome and I think that the voters of Britain have probably made a major mistake, at the end of the day, although apparently the referendum was really not legally binding, I would have to disagree with the idea that's being proposed by some that actually the British government would be free to simply disregard the result. On a legal level, they might be free to do so. But on a political level, I doubt that that'll be feasible. And on a moral level, I don't think that that would be just. I agree from what I've seen of the Brexit referendum campaign that the case that many of the advocates on the Leave side were making really was based in large part on the wrong kind of nationalism, xenophobic nationalism, as well as a lot of misinformation about things like immigration, how much sovereignty EU member countries really give up to the central EU government in Brussels, etc., etc. At the same time, the decision was made by David Cameron's government to hold a referendum on the subject, and Cameron had to know that if the Remain side lost the referendum, he would not be able to get away politically with simply disregarding the result. I'm sure he knew that even holding the referendum at all was a major risk. If he was willing to take that risk, especially given his own staunch support for continued British membership in the EU, then there had to have been a large groundswell of popular support for the idea of Brexit. There had to have been a lot of popular sentiment in the UK in favor of pulling out of the European Union. As I mentioned on Facebook just a couple of days ago, Margaret Thatcher, the great Eurosceptic, must be laughing in her grave. I wouldn't say she's been vindicated in substance necessarily. I think that Britain would probably still be better off within the EU than outside of it. And frankly, it looks as if the alternative that's likely to take shape once this Brexit is actually carried out will probably not be that fundamentally different from the situation Britain was in when it was still in the EU. For one thing, a lot of Leave campaigners have been saying throughout, we're going to make sure that Britain remains an outward-looking society, a country that's welcoming to newcomers, a country that trades extensively with the European continent and the rest of the world. This vote is not going to bring about an inward-looking, navel-gazing British society. Well, if that's true, and if Britain ends up inking a deal with the EU that resembles Norway's arrangement, which still allows for relatively free movement of people and capital, and free trade between Britain and the continent, the differences may not be vast, but the uncertainty and the political instability that this vote by itself has engendered, even before it's actually acted on, is going to be a big deal. It's already costing lots of money. It's engendering great instability in the global economy. The British pound has taken a dive from what I understand. I totally get where opponents of Brexit are coming from when they bemoan this decision. But at the same time, I don't necessarily blame David Cameron for having this referendum as a matter of principle. Strategically, it was very risky and perhaps rash and unwise, but as a matter of principle, I think it makes sense for the people of a country to be the ones to make this kind of decision at the end of the day. I've never really believed in having elites simply make all of the decisions in a society without having to be held accountable to the people at all. And on issues such as this one, where the country's elites are at odds with a large segment of their population. And that segment of the population keeps agitating for a major change to the status quo. I think that in a lot of those circumstances, a referendum is the right approach. It's the right way to get rid of all the bad blood, let the people speak on the issue, and let their decision prevail, even if it's the wrong one. As is apparently the case here, the people are going to have to pay a heavy price for their decision, or at least for the decision of a majority of the people. And that's not a perfect system by any means. Democracy is anything but a perfect system. I think it's the least bad one on offer, but I don't think that it's flawless. I think Abraham Lincoln was right if he really did say what he's often credited with saying, namely, with public opinion, nothing can fail. Without it, nothing can succeed. 
Even when it comes to issues that I agree need to be taken out of the political process, personal freedoms that need to be protected from the so-called tyranny of the majority through robust constitutional protections and a rigorous system of judicial review impl implemented by an independent judiciary. At the same time, even those kinds of fundamental freedoms are really best protected and safest when they exist in a society that has a culture of respect for individual freedom. Even in a country with a very robust constitutional system that on its face is supposed to protect individual freedom from the tyranny of the majority, at the end of the day, if you have popular majorities in a country who are hostile enough to certain freedoms that they are determined to repress them, they'll find a way to do it. All the judiciaries and constitutions in the world won't be enough to prevent them from doing it if they're determined enough. And in cases where they, those kinds of popular prejudices have been overcome, it's always at least partly because the prejudices themselves are successfully combated at a popular level. When it comes to an issue like Brexit, yes, I agree that the British people probably just shot themselves in the foot by voting this way. Let them deal with the consequences of that decision. I feel for Britons who were in the narrow minority of voters who voted to remain in the EU, who now have to make sacrifices and pay prices for the rash decision of their fellow citizens. But at the end of the day, whether we like it or not, we live in societies where the views of our fellow citizens will affect our freedoms and our well-being. And we have to deal with those popular sentiments, whether we like it or not. That's the way things work in the real world. Now, if you want to look at the British people collectively, they've made their bed. And just like I said about the Greek people in their referendum vote last year, now let them sleep in it. Hopefully, all the negative repercussions of this vote will get through to British voters and impress on them the importance of strong multilateral institutions like the EU. I think that the Leave campaign has some legitimate points to make. I can understand why Britons don't like how much sovereignty their government has given up to the EU Parliament. Although they've had it more freer than most EU member states, they kept their own currency, for example. I can see why the Britons don't necessarily like having so much social policy set in Brussels rather than at Westminster. So there are certain aspects of the um, motivations of supporters of Brexit that I can understand and respect. But from what I understand, David Cameron worked out a deal with the EU whereby Britain would get I think at least some of that decision-making authority back in the event of a vote to remain in the EU. I suspect that arrangement would have been preferable to whatever is likely to take shape after this Brexit vote. Time will tell. But at the end of the day, I don't blame David Cameron for holding this referendum vote. And as much as I disagree with the result, at least for the very most part, uh, well, I think that this is one of those areas where the people have had their say, they've made their will clear, or a majority of them have, and now it's time for them to face the music, now it's time for them to face the consequences of their actions, and that's the way democracy should work. Hopefully, they'll learn from those mistakes, and who knows, maybe most Britons will come around to supporting EU membership or something very similar to it in the future. But sometimes people have to be allowed, whole societies sometimes have to be allowed to make certain mistakes and see the consequences of those mistakes, and experience them before they'll really learn the lesson. So that's my initial reaction to the Brexit vote. I'll say this, we still do live in some interesting times. It'll be interesting to see what happens next. I know I'll be staying tuned, and I'm sure you will too.